For centuries we have lived among great people before the coming of the dominant society. Our teaching was simple, generous, and fulfilling. Have we forgotten the simple rule of life? Time and time again we are told that we are not to lose our tribal language from our ancestors. And if we did, we would lose everything as a person. Caring, honor, respect, and love. We'd also break the cycle of spirituality, emotion, and mental, and physical. Our life and identity is based on those we have lost or forgotten. We live from day to day those simple rules of life. Sometimes when we take our first journey, trail of life, sometimes referred to as the red road of life. And these things, we don't know what encounters between here and there. Sometimes we break down like this pine tree, but there's others that will take its place. Same way with the kids. When we break down, they'll take over on our trail of life, the red road of life. And these things are important. Are we forgetting to utilize our elders? Have they been forgotten? Or how can we begin to utilize them in our everyday lives, in our homes, as families, as children, as grandchildren. How can they utilize that to have a proper life and guidance with their journeys of life because they're just beginning? So these things are important to us, to us all as human beings, is that we need to learn this road is a good road. It has many winding roads, but we need to know and be careful on our way on this red road of life. We began to climb the mountain on the red road. It is very hard to climb because there's a lot of obstacles that we still encounter and a lot of good things to learn from our elders in our community. We also learn from other tribes how to apply what we have learned on the trail of life. How do we apply it? And all of these things that you're taught by the elders in your community. After we level off becoming an elder, in all that we see here in this circle, we call this the circle of life. We begin with the youngest when we are born learning to walk and talk. And as we get older, we begin to talk and understand as far as survival, and learning to be a parent. As we go around the circle, as you can see the older kids that are here, to the oldest, and all of these directions that we have. And then we end where we started from as birth. And this is where we make our final destination. Creator gave us that judgment is that we are not to live forever, but we make this judgment here, that judgment, we meet it here, and this is where we, we die, and another, another is born to make that cycle of life. All of what you see here is many things. The directions of humanity, the directions of tribe. As you can see, we have the north where I'm standing, then we have the east where the sun rises, and then we have the south where the sun stays at noontime and then we have the west where the sun sets and then we have that cycle of life as well too we have what we call a medicine wheel in it we have love caring respect and honor to live every day of our life only four rules that the creator has given us so what you see here is that medicine wheel cycle of life that we call and this is what we should be learning each day, knowing who we are, where we come from, and what our, our identities are. Everything lies within that circle behind me here with all of the directions that we have, the east, south, west, and north. All of those have a respectful meaning to our lives each day. These things we need to know. What do we know of other tribes? And maybe they could understand and maybe they can start implementing their elders to teach them the proper life existence in their communities. And that also in that circle, there is the mental, emotion, 
physical and spirituality that goes along with that life that you are to live every day. And these are the things that we need to be a part of each day to teach your children to be a good person, to be a good leader as a youth into adult and to becoming an elder. So all of this in combination to what we learned in life, in short, this is what we do. Since the time that we began this as a childhood, you as an individual, what have you learned in the spiritual practice that we have done here thus far? What have you learned? It takes a lot of discipline to feel that connection within yourself. Being humble has a major influence on your ability to stay focused on your spiritual practices. You have to recognize your blessings without taking them for granted. Make an attempt to learn all that you can. Even if just a few words, a song or two, use them to help guide you through life. Thank you for all those wonderful words you've said. Those are the things that an individual should learn through life so that they can apply that. The next oldest of this family, what have you learned from the time that we practice this spiritual spirituality? And what have you learned thus far today? I've learned how to work with the smudges. I've learned how to start sweat, how to run a sweat, how to begin a sweat. Learned how to respect other people and their ways. Don't ever interrupt anybody when they're talking. Always got to sit still and be respectful for the other people that are talking in the room. And that's a lot to be learned, what you've said. Many kids don't have that. But I'm very happy to what you have said to I'm glad for you. Now I want to ask this young man over here. He's been here for several times now. What have you learned in visually in the spiritual practice that we've done? I've learned how to abide by the rules of the ceremony and how to apply myself so that the ceremony could be a part of me as well as I'm a part of the ceremony itself. And I learned how to appreciate the ceremony and the family that provide the ceremony. And I'm very, very grateful for that. I like the way you answered that question and that's very truthful and honest to what you've done and that is good for yourself. I also want to come to this young man over here, the handsomest guy in the world. His name is Apollo, the youngest of the siblings that is here. We've been here all your life. What have you learned? I've learned how to prepare food and pray by the bell. And I've learned how to start songs by leading them. And I'm still learning how to start more songs with more words in them. Someday you're going to have children and you're going to teach these songs to your children as well and to your grandchildren, these songs. And I really thank you how you answered those questions. That is very good, very thoughtful of you. Thank you. So, as a female, being the second oldest of this family, what have you learned from the time that you can remember to this day? So far, I've learned the songs. There's a lot of songs that need to be sung and the order of them. There's a song for when you're first born to every step of the way you grow up. I want to thank you for what you've said for learning while you were here and to continue those teachings because it takes a lifetime to do a lot of things in life to keep you balanced and keep you intact as a human being whether if you're male or female so those are important to you what you've said and I want to thank you for answering in, in the way that you did thank you and now we come to the youngest beautiful lady world's champion fancy shawl dancer 
from the time that you can remember. What have you learned in the processes of the songs that we sang and the prayers and the, and the uh, sweat lodges that we've done in these ceremonies? What have you learned? Me and myself, I learned how to think straight with a positive mindset and how to prepare a meal for people the right way. Keeping that positive mindset takes you a long way in life. Continue that positive mindset. It will help you inside in your life and the people that surround you. As a grandparent to these children here, what have you observed what they've done all their lives up to this point? What would you say today what they've learned? Well, right now, yes, I am very, very proud of the kids that are here with us. And they've gone through a lot as far as learning the songs and there's never going to be an end to what we need to know more about the songs. And they're working their way through it, and I am very proud of them. I'm proud of the way that I always say that even if uh, there's other kids out there that wish that they had this, they're very lucky that He's, they've got someone that can help them through this. All the things that we've done together, the sweat lodge and smudge, they know about that. They know what the smudge means. And I'm, and I'm proud of them. I'm pro I really am proud of what they have done. Echoes. And that's what needs to happen to all of the families around the world, not just here, around the world, to be a part of what they do, to observe them what they have done. They have consumed all of these things as you, as you listen today. And I want to thank you via your response. Thank you very much. Hi, hi. That gives us an idea what this community needs. We need to look at that as to be taught something from the community, the elders. We need to get them engaged. And I want to thank you for what you've said today. If you didn't learn anything from them, then we need to seek something out so that they can we can learn something, not only you, but me as well. So my next question is, at random you can answer that, is how do we engage our elders in our community? How do you make them so that they can teach us? What do we need to do? I think we need to provide the time and space for them to offer their knowledge and to teach us everything they remember to pass it down so we can pass it down down the line I believe that the elders in our community should take it upon themselves to teach the kids what they need to know about the ceremonies you know I don't think as we grow up, I don't think that we should have to ask to be taught our cultural ceremonies. I believe that they should just be passed on, you know, since that's all we can really pass on to future generations. I want to thank you for the responses and the answers that you gave today. And that needs to be heard from the young people like you because you have the know-how. And it's needed all Indian country tribal countries, Canada and the United States, because they don't have this. You have the know-how. You have the wisdom. You have the knowledge to teach and ask for things 
so that we can continuously learn on that life cycle that we have. And all of this is important to you, to me, to everybody in this community. All of you. All of you. At the youngest age to the oldest. And those that passes this on, what you're going to pass on to your children, that you engage yourself with your children. Engage. They're the ones that's going to pass it on. And then we'll be happy. I want to thank you again for all the responses that you had today. I want to thank you very much. So I encourage the elders in the community in this country and also around the world. Take part. Be engaged with the youngsters because they're the ones that's going to carry out the legacy of this life cycle that we just talked about. So with that, I would like to thank all of you for listening and understanding. If there is anything that is needed, we will be here to help you out. Just ask. Thank you.